Hey everybody, it's Michelle from Florida Keys Birding and today we're going to be talking about the white crown pigeon. So the white crown pigeon is nicknamed by the locals the poisonwood pigeon. Um, it's because it likes to eat those yummy berries and little fruits off the poisonwood tree that we have locally here. Um, the poisonwood tree uh, is something that grows wild and we're actually not allowed to cut it down because it is a really important food source for the white crown pigeon. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute because it has a long trek. Um, so the white crown pigeon sometimes will commute over 30 miles a day. Every morning this bird will leave its nesting and roosting in the islands, um, these areas in search of fruiting trees, often on the mainland. Um, so yeah, you thought you had a long commute. <laughs> these birds have a long commute to work. Um, they're also powerful flyers. I mean, they would have to be to be able to commute that long. Um, and it has even um, been said that they are faster than a motorboat. Do you think that they can really fly faster than a motorboat? Wow, that's pretty crazy. I mean, they are pretty fast. I have seen them in the air flying and they're, they're pretty, pretty quick. I wonder if they can go faster than those, you know, they call them go fast boats. Uh, if you don't know what a go fast boat is, um, then look it up. If you live in Miami or the Keys, you, you, you know what it is. <laughs> so, um, so the oldest recorded white crowned pigeon was 14 years old and that was found in the Caribbean. Um, so if you want to identify this bird, um, it can be confused with the rock pigeon um, because it, it's just kind of the same color and it looks similar. Um, the rock pigeon is found pretty much all over the U.S. in cities and you can find them here in Miami and Key West. So um, they're also related to the Eurasian dove. So this bird is medium in size, um, similar in shape and size to the rock pigeon, which is why it gets confused. Um, and the adult males have a slate gray body with a white cap on the head and a pale white looking eye. Um, it also has a patch of iridescent green at the nape of the neck, which you can see um, in some of these photos here. They have also reddish legs um, and bill, and it has a pale, like a pale um, tip to the bill, like almost like a little white tip on the bill. Um, the females have more of a grayish white crown with uh, juveniles having a grayish brown cap. So let's talk a little bit about where they live and migration. So they're found mostly in the Caribbean. Um, they are found a little bit in Western Mexico, Yucatan, just a little bit. Um, and they're found in the lower keys year round. Um, but if you live in the Upper Keys, you'll start to see them again coming back in March and they will stick around through the summer. So you can find them throughout the Florida Keys in the summer and year round in Key West. So these birds are short distance migrants and they are a partial migrant in Florida. Um, they're mostly um, sedentary or nomadic in other areas and they're pretty much just looking for fruiting trees in that area. And many will migrate south for the winter in the Bahamas, hence why we don't see them as much in the Upper Keys through the winter. So um, as far as food goes, you can find them in treetops that have ripe fruit in poisonwood, fruiting strangler fig, gumbo limbo, cocoa plum, royal palm, pigeon plum, broadleaf blolly, and Bahama strong bark. So um, a word about poison wood. Um, so the, um, the poison wood, well they call them poison wood pigeons, right? So the poison wood, they have these little berries on them and they like to eat these little like berry things or little fruits from the poison wood. Um, but you're gonna wanna stay away from the poison wood. Um, you're gonna wanna get away from it, you're not gonna wanna touch it or get anywhere near it. Um, the poison wood is, if you get exposed to poison wood, um, you're gonna have a reaction and get very sick and you might not have it right away. So if you're exposed to poison wood, um, you may not even know 
that you ha you might think, oh, it's nothing big. I didn't have a reaction. Nothing really happened here. It's not a big deal. Um, but you'll get very sick and develop a horrible, horrible, um, itchy rash. It's like they say it's like the worst, uh, most uncomfortable thing ever. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be really bad. Um, but something interesting is they say that the sap, I believe, of the gumbo limbo tree is supposed to be some kind of, um, you know, uh, anesthetic for the um, rash that you get from poison wood. So avoid it if you see it. If you see a white crown pigeon in there eating the little berries, um, look at it from afar. You know, don't uh, sit there and touch the leaves or brush up against it. Make sure you're very careful walking through the forest. Don't touch the black stuff on the bark because that's the poisonous stuff um, and it's no good. So you want to stay far, far away from that. Um, you can see a picture of what poison wood looks like in some of these photos here. So you can see the little berries and the broad leaves and all that stuff. So um, Okay. So other things that the white crown pigeon eats are wasp, uh, flies, small snails, seeds, and flowers. Um, they also like to, you know, eat, need to eat some grit like sand to help digest the food in their crop. Um, if you don't know what a crop is, <laughs> the crop is the little, it's like a little, uh, oh, see, here we go. Yeah, here's a picture here of the, the poison wood. Um, yeah, so the crop is... Um, it's like a little pouch on their chest. Um, I have chickens and we call it a food boob. <laughs> you can see it when their food boob is full. It's like this little thing on their chest. It's like a singular, you know, little, little thing there, a little, uh, little pouch of where they, where they keep their food to grind it up and stuff like that before it goes to the rest of the body. So, um, so that's the crop. And uh, so what they do is they'll eat the fruit whole They'll swallow it whole and they'll regurgitate the seeds that are too large to digest. So they'll, you know, they'll spit it back up if they can't digest it. Um, so the habitat that they usually have is um, they'll roost and nest in low islands that are free of predators. Usually they also have mangroves, you know, like the Keys and different islands around the Keys and around the Florida Bay. So they'll forage for food in tropical hardwood hammocks and deciduous forests, both wet and dry kinds. And I usually find them often in the Key Deer Refuge on Big Pine Key in the summertime, um, near Crocodile Lake Wildlife Refuge in uh, Card Sound area and Upper Key Largo, North Key Largo. Um, also near John Pennycamp State Park in Key Largo or flying over the Key Largo Publix. You can see them often there. Um, and you can see them, of course, year round in Key West. Um, summer and spring are a great time to look for them throughout the Florida Keys. So, as far as breeding goes, um, they do breed in colonies, sometimes up to 500 pairs. They defend their nest territory and uh, the males will court females by showing stiff wing beats and flapping above the body only. Um, and then they'll glide smoothly back to their perch. So if a female is interested, the male will, will bow, coo, and spread his wings while pivoting back and forth. So that's so sweet. <laughs> And a new pair will spend a long time perched together, preening each other's head and neck. Oh, I love it. I see my little birds do that all the time. So, um, do they mate for life? I'm not really sure. I couldn't find any information on whether they do or they don't. A few people in the group said that they do mate for life. So, so I don't know. So if you know, let me know in the comments. Um, so as far as nesting goes, um, we can talk a little bit about that. Um, they will feed their young pigeon milk, that's what they called it, or crop milk, aka bird puke. <laughs> um, it's rich in fat and protein, apparently. So this is what they feed them. I think most birds feed their young bird puke. <laughs> crop milk yeah so um, both male and females will build a nest 
a sloppy looking platform of small twigs lined with finer twigs and it's usually about six feet off the ground in trees and their clutch is usually one to three eggs and the eggs are white in color. So as far as conservation goes, the white crown pigeon is still fairly numerous, but its populations have declined because of its um, threat to habitat. So, you know, um, getting rid of mangroves and, you know, uh, native trees and stuff that they use for food and nesting. Yeah, so it can kind of ruin their rates of, um, you know, reproduction and stuff like that. They rate a, about a 15 out of 20 on the Continental Concern Score for, um, and they're included on the yellow watch list for species declining in population. Um, so they're very limited. Um, coastal habitats have also been destroyed by development and logging over much of its range. Um, and since the 1990s, increasingly severe hurricanes have swept through the Caribbean and destroyed large sections of roosting and breeding habitats as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. You learned a little bit more about the white crown pigeon. And um, I'm already seeing them in my area this time of year. And hopefully wherever you are in the Keys, you have seen them too. If not, I'm sure you will. Or if you're coming down to visit this summer or spring, be sure to look for the white crown pigeons. Thanks.